Hi, Jason Kerr here from Kerr Farm Wine at Kumiu in New Zealand. I'm going to talk to you today about pruning your vines. There's a few things you need. First of all is a set of uh, uh, secateurs. Make sure they're nice and sharp if you can, and if they're oiled it makes a difference. Next thing you need, and you may not need it, is a big pair of loppers. Depends how big your vines are. And the last thing is a few twisty ties. So that's all you need. Well, we'll wander off down to the vines and have a look at uh, getting started. This is one of our famous pinotage vines and I'm going to show you how to prune it. At the moment it's uh, cane pruned and these two canes are some of the wood from last year that we laid down and it has new shoots which this year's season's fruit has come, at, come on. So if you just come in a bit closer Wendy I'll, I'll show you. So this is the two year old wood and this is the one year old wood. It's this wood here that the next season's uh, grapes will come on. So what we'll do is I'll show you how to cane prune this side and I'll show you how to spur prune this side so it'll be two types of different pruning. So we'll get stuck in. Got to cut all this wood away and clear a space for the new season's wood to be to be laid down. you warm on the cold morning. It's um, middle of July and we had quite a frost this morning. When you get to the bigger ones it's good to use the loppers but you can uh, can manage with um, the smaller secateurs. So we're going to select this this one here will be our cane so we'll trim off any lateral shoots. Don't want those. Just cut it to a, a good sort of length. If you just come in a wet bit, Wendy, I'll um, just show you these. Uh, these are the buds here, and from uh, next year that will be where the shoots come from. That uh, the new shoots that that have the fruit. So we've got to look after those. We're going to wrap this onto this wire here, and. Uh, That'll just keep it firm. So if you just move back out again, Wendy, so you can see me wrapping this on. So you just gently twist it round, hook it at the end, and put a twisty tie to secure it. And that's all you have to do. Next spring, these buds will put some shoots up that will come up through here, and about this area here between the fourth and fifth nodal bud, is where the fruit will be. Now we'll just move over to the other side. Um, this side I'll show you how to spur prune it. And this is what you'd use if you were training your vine on a gazebo or a pergola. This long cordon you leave and you trim the shoots back to two buds. And each one of those shoots will produce, or each one of those buds will produce another shoot which will bring you lots of nice new canes for the next year. So I'll just continue trimming along like this. Um, you might like to come in a bit closer Wendy so I can just show the, the two buds here. On this one here there's one bud there and there's one bud just under there. So if you cut it just above that second bud with the cane sloping away, the cut sloping away from the bud. Alright, back out again now Wendy. So we just clean up the head, leaving lots of nice buds for next season.
there we are all done so just to recap this one is good if you're going to train it along a, a wire or a, a trellising system because this cordon stays there all the time and each year you just cut back to a couple of buds and the shoots come up and you'll get some lovely grapes this, this is more a uh, wine grape style of pruning where each year you cut the old cordon off and you lay down a new cane and each of those new canes uh, each bud on that new cane puts out a new shoot uh, where your fruit comes to um, e equally as good um, this is a bit better quality fruit for wine making um, but this is easier if you've got a trellis well good luck with your pruning if you need uh, any more help you can email me Jason that's J-A-I-S-O-N at carefarmwine.co.nz see you again sometime